Good afternoon. I want to thank the Raby family for allowing me this short time to talk about a giant of a man. In 1996, the contemporary Christian group for him released a song titled, Measure of a Man. The chorus was, oh, I say the measure of a man is not how tall you stand, how wealthy or intelligent you are, because I found out the measure of a man God knows and understands. For he looks inside to the bottom of your heart, and what's in the heart defines the measure of a man. Now, if God looks inside to the bottom of our hearts to define the measure, measure of a man, then as a mortal man, I'll tell you that Jim Raby's measure is immeasurable to me. For the Bible teaches us in 1 Samuel 16, 7, the Lord doesn't see things the way, the way people see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I'm sure that every person in this room today can attest that Jim never judged any of us. I believe that you can also tell a lot about a man by noticing the things you never hear him say. I never heard him, Jay, Jim, say, don't bother me with that. I never heard him say the Lord's name in vain or any swear word for that matter. I also never heard him more the words I hate. For Proverbs 3, 6 says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And in 16, 9, a man's heart plans his way but the Lord directs his steps. Is there any doubt that Jesus Christ directed Jim's path and his steps? I haven't known Jim as long as many of you in this room today, but I know that I loved him as much as any person. That any person could love and respect another. I learned this love from him. I love my time here in Huntsville and returning here to visit, and that's largely because Jim would tell me that he considers me a dear friend and was never afraid or ashamed to tell me that he loved me. Jim always greeted me with a smile, but there was no mistaking when it was time to get down to business. Jim has accomplished so many things in his life and too many for me to mention in my four minutes of time before all my sobbing. So let me share a few of my most memorable with you. Jim loved God. Jim loved and adored Ms. Ellen. Jim loves his son David and his wife Sheila. Jim loves his immediate family, Glenda, his extended family, STI. Jim loves his granddaughter, Miss Ashley. And lest I forget, Auburn and fishing. And this example of love that means more to me than all of his accomplishments protecting our country, putting men in space, founder of STI, becoming the recognized world expert for soldering. One might believe that all these earthly accomplishments would be what he left behind as his legacy. However, I propose that this is, that his true legacy is what resides in each and every one of us, the things he indelibly left in our hearts. And if I had to choose one, it would be this. Whenever he would meet and greet me, he would ask me, how is your prayer life? I am carrying on this legacy by looking in the mirror each day and asking myself that very question. I also ask my sons, and you can ask my nieces and nephews the same. For Proverbs 22, 6 tells us, train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. And Mark 10, 14, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. In Acts 15, 11, we believe we're all saved the same way by the undeserved grace of our Lord Jesus. Amen. So my friend, we know where you are because of your prayer life, the way you walked the talk, the way you lived, the example you set, and to his lovely bride. I offer one last reminder from John 16, 22. So you also are now in anguish, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, for no one can take your joy away from you. We always love you and remember you, Jim, for the example you set and your living example of the measure of a man.